aside pineapple for tonight because after Adam crashed, they decided to switch editors, and quite frankly, it changed my um, interests <laughs> for the night. Um, so I'm gonna do some CSS animations and also take a look at my library for image filters, which is called Iguana. So let me load that up actually. Well, there it is. What just happened there? Not quite sure what happened. Okay, now I can't seem to click on anything for some reason. Alright, just give me a second here. Apologies for that just now. I just got called away to um, see something really cool. You know, I love nature and so <laughs> it's not a surprise that I would get called to see a moth. I thought that was pretty cool. Still can't figure out why Firefox won't let me click anything, so I'm gonna have to restart Firefox. wanted to show you my um, CSS image filter library, which as I told you is called Iguana. You have to forgive my system because it is not new. It is pretty, pretty old and sometimes it shows its age in some rather interesting ways. For example, Atom randomly freezes and takes the whole system with it. 
sometimes for just typing a letter or pressing backspace, pressing delete. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge, but I work with it and I make it happen. The thing is, it's not the tools you have, it's your ability and dedication, and that's what makes you capable of doing what you're able to do. So when you see the stuff that I do on my streams, you'd be surprised if what I'm working with is not the most spectacular hardware in the world, it's not new, but I make it work. going to restart Firefox and hopefully that will bring the music back and that will allow me to show you um, Iguana as well. Okay, there we go. That's the music back. Not sure why it opened my cloud, I didn't ask for it. Anyway, so as I was telling you, I wanted to show you um, Iguana. It keeps hiding the tab for some reason. It's clearly not that either. Let's try this again. Something is clearly wrong here. I wish I knew what it was. Finally, Firefox is deciding to cooperate with me. <laughs> that was weird. Alright, so libraries... Here we are. This is what I wanted to show you earlier. This is a CSS library called Iguana. It's free, it's open source. It's not on GitHub because I decided to switch from GitHub to um, what's in the other the name of the other one? I forgot what it is now. G GitLab, right. I don't really use any of these services that often. They save everything in my cloud and forget about it. So, you know. But if you do want to contribute, I can set up a GitLab page and allow you to contribute. I don't really use Git that often because I'm usually the only person working on this stuff. But that's just, if you wanted to contribute, you could. Um, so, just to explain what this does, it gives you some Instagram light filters. But it wasn't inspired by Instagram, it was actually inspired by another project that I saw where someone was creating image filters in CSS but they used um, overlays and then they used blend modes and different stuff that I thought was really complicated and necessary so I decided to recreate it but instead of using a whole bunch of complicated methods to get the results that they got I decided to make it so that you can just add a class to an image and there you go so the original image is all the same thing and the um, actual code that changes it is just a filter in CSS. One another cool thing that I did is I added dark mode to this page. You can turn it on and off. That uses JavaScript. I wrote a simple JavaScript library as well called Toolbox doesn't really do much but it does do what you need it to do it's not jquery so it's not heavy it's not complicated but it does its job right so i'm going to show you the code for iguana and show you how it works just give me a second to load it up
Here it is. Very, very simple. By the way, switch editors from at home so that we don't get any more problems. So I'm gonna have to change some settings here. I haven't used Notepad QQ in a while, but it's based on Notepad++, so it should be pretty um, smooth and straightforward. Right, so here we are. This is what the filters in Iguana CSS look like. They're very simple and they use built-in features of CSS. There should be CSS image filters. You have um, the things like sepia and hue rotate, contrast, invert, saturate, brightness, etc. I just used a whole bunch of combinations of, of those and created all of these different filters. So what these do, sepia of course turns things kind of brown and hue rotate changes the hue of any color data in the image, invert just inverts the values, contrast is pretty straightforward obviously, saturate changes the saturation of the colors, and brightness obviously changes the brightness. But if you play with these values and combine them, you can get some pretty interesting results. So that's what I did here. And it's very easy to contribute to Iguana or to add to Iguana, you just copy one of these and change some values and see what you get. So I'm actually going to demonstrate that. Let me pull it up here. I need to remember to update this page because I haven't done that in a long time. As you can see, Iguana is not even listed here. And some of these projects that I have here, I haven't touched in years. But that is all of us as developers, designers, etc. We never get our own to editing our pages. So now we have this pulled up here. Let me drop that over there. Drop this over here. And I'm going to demonstrate what it takes to edit these filters. Very, very simple. So let me add one. Here. Call it polka dot. Let me also open the HTML because they're not going to see it on the page unless I add it. Oh, and by the way, I can use this to. Um, oh, yeah. I can demonstrate just how simple Anol is as well. Anol is the framework that I would have created in CSS, pure CSS. It doesn't use any JavaScript whatsoever, so let me demonstrate to you how simple it is to use a null body. Just add the class a null. If I turn this off, we'll still have some of the features of a null, but will look rather different. So you see the text is different, and certain other things are missing, and the background is missing because I added that to the um, master of the page itself in master CSS and that is set by a CSS custom property aka variables so you can change all those features in and all on the fly basically and then you have the header is in header and it contains this um, in center row which doesn't actually have any um, display information it's just to align things that aligns this content here. I do need to fix a few bugs as you can see because it is not aligned exactly correctly but I'll get around with that. Nobody really uses this so <laughs> I don't really I don't really do much with it but if anybody is interested I'll probably put a little more effort into it. And then of course um, 
Oh, I also I'm using another um, another framework in here, which is passion fruit. That's one that I developed a few years ago after I got frustrated with Bootstrap because I kept having to fix the same things over and over and over again. I then decided to create my own framework based on a fixes CSS file that I kept using in every project to try to fix problems with Bootstrap. And that turned into its own project and that's how Passion Fruit was born. And the, the motto behind Passion Fruit is do less it is it's less thinking I think it is and more drinking passion fruit, something like that. I'll have to look it back up. But yeah, so like this here, this box here is from Passion Fruit. Um Pad Me All is from Passion Fruit. A number of other features like these simple things because passion fruit just gives you a whole bunch of um like very simple classes that do the same job that you would use like a framework like um tailwind for but it's not as heavy as tailwind nor is it as um thorough as tailwind because obviously in one man doing the job of god knows how many people so it's, it's not as thorough, but it still does a pretty similar job to what Tailwind does. And you can do a lot with Passion Fruit. But right, from here you have um, AM Body from Anul. Which gives you this section here where all these images are contained. And then of course just the divs with containers and the actual images. So it's very simple. Don't mind how much I was talking. It's actually very simple, very straightforward, very easy to work with. What did we call this? I nearly wrote potato head. <laughs> right, polka dot. Um, the Deha name is going to be pulled by this element here, this pseudo element really that you see above the image. Let me just reload. Not sure why. Oh, I need to fix the layout on mobile devices because it shouldn't be invisible when I say that. Anyway, this pseudo element here pulls data from data name and displays it above the image, but it can't actually be on an image because. If you're not familiar with how CSS and HTML work, images can't have pseudo elements. So you have to add any pseudo elements to a container, like a div or a section or whatever else contains your image. So that's what I did there. Oops, what did I just do? Okay, so we just added a new one called Polkadot. Some of these are invisible because of the size that this is at. So let me just resize this here. I'll fix those bugs eventually. I just never got around to it. Alright, so here's Polkadot. And it should look the same as... Wait a minute. I just realized I just accidentally replaced one. I was using um I was using Ahem shortcuts in, in Notepad QQ and that obviously doesn't work. So I thought I had duplicated this line and I didn't. Let me just copy and paste instead. Hopefully, I'll one day be able to get my dream system, or I should say dream systems, because currently I work with two computers. I have a, a very old laptop from about 2011, a very old HP Elite book, and then I have a workstation that's also very old. Both of them are dinosaurs. Then again, dinosaurs wouldn't recognize these. They're, they're very old. So hopefully someday I can get some proper hardware and 
won't have to worry so much about choosing, you know, the latest of software to run on them. But anyway, that will happen someday. Just keep supporting me and we'll get there. Okay, let's see. Polka dot and play corner should be both visible, right? And as you can see, they're basically the same thing because they haven't changed anything yet. And just a little note, Play Corner is an actual place in Barbados, which is where I'm from. So that's where I got that name from. Most of these names that you see here have some sort of meaning, like Frangipani is a plant that you'll find all across Barbados. Um, Macropoda is the name of a marsupial um, order, not order, what is it? It's a I'm trying to remember the, the exact classification. But anyway, a group of marsupials are, are just marsupials in general, is it? No. Kangaroos, I believe it is. Yeah. That's where I got that name from. All of these basically have some sort of meaning to me, so they're not just chosen at random. Okay, now I'm going to choose some values for polka dot. Sepia, as I told you, turns these brown, so I'm gonna have polka dot be a little more festive. We're gonna use less of sepia, just a tiny amount. don't really want to invert the color too much, so I'm going to turn that to 5%. Contrast I don't, well then again, yeah I do want contrast to be pretty high, but not as high as that. Saturation, oh yeah I definitely want this turned up. Add hue rotate as well. Now it actually pays if you have the time to go and read the documentation for all of these filters because it will allow you to know what you're actually getting without having to do guesswork like I'm doing right now. I do have somewhat of an idea of what they do, but I'm not looking at the documentation, so it's easy to just forget what they do and get an inaccurate result. But when it was working on this originally, it was looking at the documentation, if I remember correctly, to figure out what each one does. And I highly advise you, if you're going to be working in CSS and doing stuff like image filters and everything, try to familiarize yourself with what each thing does. I just realized I added those values to the wrong one. So let me try that again. Some. I wonder if I have some styles on on AM body that are causing this not to work as I want it to. Okay, I obviously do. 
have to fix that next time I actually dedicate some time to working on this page. Because these should be able to go on a single row at this size. But I obviously never got around to doing that. That's much more like what I was looking for. Something a little more artistic. to see if there are any more um, CSS filters I can add to this one because I would like to give it a little more pop than it has and I do believe there are more but I can't remember offhand so I'm gonna head over to MDN pull up CSS filters well CSS image filters Tree. Oops. Right, there we go. The only one that I'm not going well, the only two that I'm not going to use to show are drop shadow and blur because I want this. Um, image filter image filter library not to blur anything nor add any shadows it's just to change the appearance of the image as is and nothing else Doesn't look to me like there are any that I'm missing. So that means that I need to work with the ones that exist. Can be a little boring sometimes when there's nothing extra that you can play with. At least when you have an artistic mind like mine that you want to add some extra spice to it. But that just forces you to innovate.
I'm aiming for is a slightly more natural look to the image. So that's why I'm playing with the values of brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. After playing with you rotate and um, while leaving sepia and invert kind of low because the <coughs> oh yeah, I'm turning out saturation. Saturation will give the colors um, a, a greater level of depth to them if you want to use that term. And brightness and contrast will, as you can imagine, change the level of contrast and brightness. I mean, that's pretty straightforward, but yeah. When you play with those values together, you can get some surprising results. And it's similar to what I do when I'm doing photography. I can actually demonstrate that with my photos. Let me go to Google Photos and show you. Don't worry, nothing um, scary here. Just a bunch of memes, but yeah. <laughs> what I do with my photos a lot is turn down my exposure to a very low level and it allows you to get more contrast so that the brighter areas are brighter and the darker areas are darker. But the, the trick in that is it kind of makes things pop more than if you were to just take a straight home photo like how people tend to do. So like, let me see if I can show, I'm trying to think of where I have any of my edited photos I've done that with. But then again, actually I can show you right on this page, like this one here brings out the effect that I'm looking for. Where the edges of the metal are really bright and the darker areas are really dark, you know. That's the kind of effect that I'm going for. But in this case, I want to give it a slightly more cartoonish, surreal kind of look. Sometimes the most simple things, as I always say, when you start simplicity, it brings out the, the, um, the depth of life. That's how you can really create some interesting stuff, just start simplicity. You don't need to go all out trying to look for something, you know, spectacular. Just keep it simple and start on top of that simplicity. Now the only challenge is this image that I have here is kind of um, low in resolution, so with the filter like this, it's going to start to pixelate. If I had a higher resolution image as, a, as an example, you'd be able to see just how good this would work. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to actually swap out this image. I have a number of demo images saved for um, Iguana already, so it shouldn't be too hard to find one that will work. This one looks like a good one. Wrong pitch. All right, so this has more resolution and pixelates less, so it should allow me to play around with this a little more and see if I can get a better result. And don't worry, I'm not sticking and playing with this for the whole night. I'm going to go to um, animation shortly, do some quick CSS animations in a new library called Amoeba, which is, as I said in my previous stream, another one of these species of lizards that we have here.
obviously not every image will work the same with every image filter that's another interesting tidbit that you can figure out from this which is one of the reasons why you swap them occasionally and, and check them and see how they look <laughs> they look pretty psychedelic This should be interesting. use an iguana for an iguana. And if you're wondering, yes, we do actually have these in Barbados, and yes, we do actually see them in our plants at random. Eating them occasionally when they feel like. Okay, I like it like this. So I'm actually going to leave this image here. And the next time I upload it, it's going to use that image as opposed to the other one I had before because that looks pretty cool. Alright, so that was Iguana. If you want to contribute to this, you can contact me on Twitter or on my page on my website. And let me know if I need to set up a GitLab page for it because I haven't, but I can. And you can also download it, by the way, I forgot to mention that, you can grab it and you can use it on your own web pages if you want. It's very simple, very straightforward, but it's pretty cool if you ask me. I already use it in a few places, like on our church's website on the inspiration page. All these images here use iguana to change their appearance so I did not have to go and search for a whole bunch of different images I could make them look a little bit different and that adds to the interest level of course which is one of the tricks of the trade instead of reinventing the wheel every time finding new images and finding different filters and doing a bunch of image editing and all that just save some time grab iguana drop it in your page draw some classes on it and there you go. Alright, so as I said, let's get to some animations. So I'm going to create a new project for this. I'm tempted to fire up Atom because Atom makes everything so much easier, but I'm also a little bit afraid of it freezing. Let me just make sure I have this spelling correct. Yes, I do. Alright, and this is the lizard that I'm going to be naming this library off of. We have these here in Barbados. They don't really cause any trouble or anything like that. You can find them occasionally walking under the rocks or eating other lizards, which is pretty common for them. And apparently they bite pretty hard, but I've never tried to find out. Oh wait, I went to open instead of save.
first things first, I like to add my custom properties, also known as variables. The reason I'm going to use them in this instance is that I want these animations to have some standard timing. The other reason I like to use custom properties is that you can, as I would have mentioned in my last stream, you can switch these out very quickly in a theme if you want to create your own theme or if you're creating a page like and you're using a library or a um, framework to make a template or anything like that, you can just grab these, change their values and change everything else in the rest of your file without having to recreate or reinvent the wheel. So that's why I like to use custom properties as opposed to just dropping everything directly in as hard-coded values. Definitely not at home because it's not all completing my um, brackets. That's kind of annoying. Let me try switching editors. In fact, I'm going to use get it as opposed to notepad QQ. I believe this will auto complete. Does it? Apparently not. But it does have a plugin for that, I believe. Yes, it does. Um, nothing in, in the way of preferences. But let me see if this will allow me to do things a little faster. There we go, that's what I was looking for. use a separate class for fast and slow and all that but instead what I will do is have a set of classes that define fast, slow, medium and sluggish and sleepy and all those so that you can just drop in the name of an animation and then change the speed with another class so for that we're gonna have Amoeba fast that will have transition duration be let me change something here a minute in these preferences Right, 
that's much better. By the way, um, small tip, I used to use the shorthand of duration, I mean of transition instead of transition duration and then just dropping my transition speed there, but I began to run into problems when I did that because transition is shorthand similar to how border is shorthand and it's supposed to carry multiple values. So what can happen is you add a speed and then end up overriding another value somewhere else and that can cause some bugs that you didn't expect so my suggestion is instead of using um, the shorthand of transition and then just putting a speed use the full thing thing that I'm going to use here, set of variables for movement. This will help to standardize these animations, so we're going to have demonstrate something shortly too that I think is really cool which is that you can use a variable within a variable seems to have been stopping over there. This one we're going to have translate, or sorry, transform, translate x, and then we're going to use variable.
actually don't need. Right. Wait a minute. I just just had a little brain freeze. I'm trying to decide if I should make this. I think I know what I'm going to do with these. That noise you would have heard just now is just my system telling me I went too far. going to experiment with something here that I have never done before, which is to use um, an animation and include some classes in it. Well, not classes, sorry, variables in it. I've never actually done that, so I want to see if it works. At least in the way I have it might.
bite the bullet and load at him because, quite frankly, these other editors are cramping my style and I don't have time for that. Waiting on that to load, let me actually load up Inkscape as well because before I hop off of here I want to draw a simple icon for Amoeba. I'll probably get back to these animations in another stream because it's getting late and I'm getting tired so I'll do the actual full-fledged animations in a later stream just laying the groundwork tonight. streaming this one for another hour so I'm gonna cut it short very soon because it is getting late and I don't want to hold anyone here too long so I'm gonna just drop in some quick stuff on this index page and on the CSS file and probably draw the basis the icon and we're gonna head off of here files from passion fruit so that I can style this quickly.
hesitate to add comments to me code no matter what it is, even if it's, if it's just plain HTML, because it helps you to find things faster when you're editing. these will do for those who don't know CSS very well. Translate X moves things on the X axis which is side to side. Translate Y moves things up and down. So I'm adding some variables that will encode the instructions to move things by from 1 to 5 pixels up or down. And in this animation down here I will have it do both, but at different times. So, first it will move things up, then I'll have it pause, and then I'll have it move things to the side. So that's why you call it shift and slate. But I'm not going to do that tonight necessarily because I'm too tired to think. <laughs> so, I will get back to that in another stream. What these two classes will do is basically unfold things left or right, which is very similar to something that's included in Passion Fruit. I can actually demonstrate that quickly. If I add, uh, let me make this a glass panel, dark, and add unfold X. I 
not to make this here come down from the top. So let me move it down. Why isn't it visible? Am I missing something? Should make it visible. No, there it is. Obviously, the passion fruit files did not get loaded. So that means I have an incorrect URL. far enough up from here. There we go, so that's what Unfold X does from Passion Fruit. And in Amoeba, the same thing will happen with Amoeba Unfold X and Amoeba Unfold Y, just along the X and Y axis. But you won't need all of Passion Fruit to do that, because Passion Fruit has a whole lot of other stuff that has nothing to do with animation. So what I'm doing with Amoeba is creating a library that only has animations, doesn't have any um, display information basically, except for maybe changing text color or something like that. So Amoeba will be much later than, um, than Passion Fruit or any of my other frameworks and libraries would be. It basically does what it says on the tape. to make this an actual animation with keyframes, so I'll just use this as scale X all. So I don't actually need a variable for this now I think about it. Let me take this back over from here. I can just make this an animation name. Oops, wrong class. I am definitely getting sleepy. Pop off of here shortly because I'm starting to make errors and I don't drink coffee, so <laughs> I definitely need to hop off. So, where is it? Uh, unfold, right? That's the one I was looking for. Let's make this animation name. Oops. Sorry, 
as I said, I'm in a nest variable. So for this one, I'm going to actually have a variable for um, full x fast, which will be default. And that can be changed from up here. So what I'm going to do is add um, full speeds. thinking if I wanted to hard code this one to be, well, to use a different variable than, or, or I should say use a single variable rather than having multiple variables, but I'm going to use multiple variables and then you could either hard code them or pull them from these variables here. So this one will use the variable amoeba fast. What I'm also going to do is drop um, to toolbox in here, which is a very simple library that I wrote. I'm certainly not a JavaScript genius, I barely use it, but um, this will allow me to um, utilize some very basic functions to swap out classes on the fly. I'll add that functionality later. Let me just make sure I have the right URL for this. Okay, cool. and probably in a future stream I'll demonstrate using toolbox to switch around some classes and even attributes of um, different classes I already have so that I could switch these variables that I set on the fly basically. just a little insight into why I chose the name Amoeba, apart from the fact that I like to be consistent and use um, thematic names, is the fact that Amoebas are very animated animals and they have kind of jerky robotic movements, so I decided to name an animation framework after an animal with jerky robotic movements. But also, once they've been in the sun for a while, they can be pretty pretty fast so that's also why these variable names are the way they are basically
Alright, so that's that for that. I'll get back to this page in another stream. As I said, I am getting a bit tired, so I'm going to load up the escape and draw the icon for Amiva quickly. Beavers tend to live among the rocks and they like to hide in grass and leaves and stuff like that so I'm choosing a kind of earth tone backdrop. And I'm going to add another rectangle on top of here. To represent the stones that they like to rest on. That's what happened here. I was wondering why that was doing that. Now I'm going to use the graphics tablet and draw a very basic amoeba outline. poorly there at the end. So let me try that again. beautiful things about where I live is that every morning if you get up pretty early you can actually see one of these lizards sitting on the rocks sunbathing. I 
uh, some things during the day when you hear the leaves wrestling and you look outside, that's one of them again. And I tend to have an affinity for creating things that, well, I mean, at least creating things in terms of code that remind me of nature and things I see around me, so that's why I chose to go with the Amoeba for this project. Apart from just their tendency to be very animated creatures. an area to give it two tones when I get to coloring shortly and mark the ear. Almost done here. Just giving it some color, and then I'm gonna probably save this. And if anything, any tweaks need to be made, that will happen in a later stream.
I really like the fact that I can actually move stuff around after painting it in Inkscape. That's one of the cool features of vector graphics that you don't get when you're painting otherwise. And I saw web technology, so all this I could even drop into a, into a, an actual web page and adjust it with CSS, which is really cool. <laughs> 